Hello to you all. Welcome to the Next Generation Role Model Show. My name's Victoria Summer. I'm your host. Today on the show, we have our latest Next Generation Role Model. He is a superstar tennis player and he is also an actor. So he's an athlete, an actor, and he loves animals. He, his name is Connor Dean and he is joining me now. Come in Connor, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello, I can hear you. I can hear you. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So um, I want to talk today a little bit about your career. Uh, Connor is 18 years old and um, I want to start off on how you started out. Tell me when you first knew that you wanted to be an athlete, you wanted to be a tennis player. Tell me about that. Well, ever since I was young, like I've tried every sport. When I say every sport, I mean, I've tried roller hockey, I've tried soccer, football. But when I played tennis, something about it just like stuck with me. It has been my favorite sport for a long time now. And I just enjoy every moment of playing it. And for acting, my brother is, was also an actor, but now he's going into film school because he decided he wants to do things behind the camera. But I used to always have to go with him to the auditions because my mom couldn't leave me home. So I just decided one day, if I'm going to these auditions, why not just try out for it? So I started doing that. And ever since that day, I've been loving that as well. And tell me, how old were you then when you started your acting? Because I even before I was an actor, I did a commercial for I think it was Walmart. Okay. So if we're counting then, it was, I want to say I was around like six or seven for okay. that. Young, six or seven. And were you already playing tennis then or did acting come first? Acting uh, sort of like they came almost at the same time because I started playing tennis a little before and then I quit it for a bit and then I got back into it. And that's when I, that's when I knew that this was something I wanted to do. And then not long after I started doing acting. So it was about around the same time. Okay, very good. And Connor, you have a great, great page on Instagram. Uh, chaps, make sure you follow him at Connor Dean on um, Instagram. That's your title, isn't it, on Instagram, at Connor Dean? Yeah, at the Connor Dean, and that should be it for everything, I think. Simple, simple. So <laughs> at the Connor Dean on um, Instagram. Connor has a great page because he's included a lot about his tennis, um, also about his acting and, and his love for animals. How do you intend to use your platform, Connor, to inspire others? So I want to show people like definitely during this time that we're in right now with everything going on, I need to show, I want to show people that we all just need to stay positive and I want to inspire people to like never give up. So I try to keep my positive, uh, my uh, page as positive as possible to try to show people, hey, we're going through this tough time, but that doesn't get me down. I'm still doing what I need to do. I'm still doing what I want to do. So you guys should never give up on what you want to do either. Never give up and keep going despite all. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. Let's talk about social media and how it's impacted your career. So social media has changed a lot. So it used to like not matter for acting or anything, but now it's a big thing and everybody looks at it. So if sometimes for acting, they'll look at your Instagram or TikTok or any of that to see how many followers you have so they can get like a word out about their movie or TV show they're planning. So really social media has become a big thing that I feel like everyone, if they want to start out, should also focus on. You know what I mean? Yeah, so kids should focus. So there's some advice there for you kids. Um, focus on your social media, Connor says. What other advice do you have for kids who are starting out? So probably if you're starting out with acting, I would say maybe take an acting class, see if this is actually something you want to do. Because there are many kids that are like, I want to try this. And then they'll try it and be like, no, nah, I don't like this anymore. 
So I would probably say with acting, you want to get an acting, like go to an acting class and actually try it out. Like even when I was like acting for a while, I still went to an acting class with Lisa Picot and I loved every minute of it. And there was still more that I could learn even though I've been doing it for a while. Yeah, yeah, acting class is really important. It's like a muscle and you have to, you have to keep on going to the gym and working it out, you know? And um, right. you've got to stay prepared for auditions because you never know when an audition's gonna come up and uh, you have to be ready, right? <laughs> that is true. We once, uh, one day me and my brother had like a combined three or four auditions in one day. And the worst part was it was my mom's birthday. So she had to spend her day driving us around and I felt so bad for her. So the next day we went to a nice dinner with her and everything, but just like an audition, you could get it any minute. So you always have to be prepared, like you said. Yeah, you gotta be prepared. And yeah, let's do a shout out to all the mums who drive their kids around to all of their different school activities, auditions, music lessons, horse riding. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't do it without my mom. I'm really thankful for everything she's done for me. Yeah, and you live in LA, Connor, and the traffic there is pretty crazy. Oh, so um, yeah, extra big special shout out to Connor's mom. What's your, what's your mom's name? My mom's name is Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Um, uh, thanks for being such an amazing mum to Connor. He obviously appreciates you very much, which is fantastic. Now, obviously, you have great support from your parents, which is really important. It probably is the most important thing. But a lot of yeah. kids, um, they perhaps also do not have support from their parents, but they don't have an agent or a manager or anything like that. Can you talk about whether they, you think that kids need managers or agents? So I would probably say you, you do not, when you're starting out, you don't really need both. You could either get, get an agent or a manager and they, they are sort of your team. They're your team that you work with. They get you out there, get your name out there for auditions. So even if you don't have support from your parents, you have support from your agent or manager. And people need to remember that you don't pay them unless you get paid from a job they get a little part of the money you get from a job so you don't have to pay them for just working with you you just pay them when you book a job yeah good and can you um also answer that question for tennis as well um because i'm sure people will be interested to know can you give us a bit of background about the tennis that you've done and then tell us about you know whether you need a, a good manager in, in tennis so for tennis, if people want to start out with tennis, I would say like the same thing, same thing with an acting class. I'd say take like a, a little group lesson or a clinic and see if it's something you want to do. And with tennis, you don't need uh, an agent or a manager. Instead, your team is your coaches or your instructors for fitness or uh, like your wellness, wellness coaches. They're your team that help you in and outside the match. And they are really important people. If you have a good coach, then that would be, and that would be a very important thing. And sometimes it matters about the connection you have with your coach. Because even if you have like a really good coach, but you don't have a good connection, that's not a good thing. You should have like a really good connection with your whole team. And I feel like that's very important. Very good. Yeah, very good. And in terms of tennis, do you have the ability to make money um, now at your age? Obviously, you've made money in the past from being an actor on commercials and stuff. But how about tennis? So tennis is a little different because if you win money, then you're you're not considered a junior anymore. So it's a, it's a little different about how it works. But I've been playing in uh, money tournaments to just play against all these great players because I'm playing against like adults and college kids so it's like a really good practice for me but yeah it's different from acting because it changes like your whole career if you win money early wow and what's the ultimate goal connor is it to be um in wimbledon or in the u.s open or is it to be an actor on a big movie tell me what the ultimate goal is so really i see myself like because I feel like I can combine both my tennis skills and my like acting skills in one. So that's why I wanted to be a sports broadcaster because I can use my acting skills of thinking on the spot 
or acting about everything that's going on and my tennis like knowledge of all the sports or everything around me I feel like I can use that combined but I definitely will never give up playing tennis like that's my favorite thing and I hope one day I can play on the tour and acting uh, I've been writing scripts as well like I've been I've been working on things like that. I actually made a production company with my brother called Penny Arcade Pictures that we're going to work with a little bit of that. But I see myself doing a lot in the future. That's fantastic news. And you're creating in all different areas in the entertainment business. Very, very important. And I'm sure Connor will agree with me that you create your own content. And uh, Connor's gone ahead and started his own production company with his brother. I love that. That's, that's really fantastic. Let's talk a bit about peer pressure because it's not easy. You're 18 years old. You've obviously been doing acting since you were young. You mentioned you were doing commercials at like seven six or seven so um tell me about peer pressure do you get any kind of negativity so with acting all you're gonna face is like negativity you're gonna face rejection a lot because that's what the whole business is you go into an audition and they'll they'll basically be like yeah you're not the right fit and you'll be rejected but with tennis a lot of people have told me before that like oh I'm not good that I should just quit and I just didn't I didn't listen to them I just kept on going and then they ended up being the ones that that quit and I kept on going. I kept on moving up levels and everything. So I I would just say, don't listen, like, don't, don't worry about negativity, like from either, either careers, just focus on yourself. Don't worry about rejection or anything because you're going to face it in acting or anything that you do. I'd say ignore it and just keep going forward. Wow, your strength of mind, Connor, comes across so clearly um, speaking here in the interview. And um, strength of mind as an actor is one of the most important things. And of course, as a tennis player as well, it's a lot about how you can control your own mind and your thoughts and, you know, positivity. So thank you for, for setting a great example on that. I think that's a really, really important thing. So we've talked about where you see yourself. So um, you want to be a sports broadcaster. That's kind of like the ultimate goal. Tell me where you see yourself 10 years from now. Probably 10 years from now, I can see like after I get out of college and everything, I can probably see myself playing a lot of tennis, like writing, writing more, focusing on scripts as well. But I probably see myself also interning at like maybe the tennis channel or ESPN, like doing something like that so I can get into the business because it's all about getting my name out there for sports broadcasting. So I probably see myself in 10 years starting to do that, getting myself out there to these big name like uh, companies and starting that. Yeah, excellent. And let's talk about rejection. Um, we, we touched on this earlier. How do you actually cope with rejection? So like I said before, like I faced a lot of rejection in my life. So I've learned over the years that I just shouldn't let it control me anymore. I shouldn't let what these, uh, the words that these people say control my life because I used to let the, that control me all the time. Like people would say, oh yeah, just stop or tell me, yeah, you're not good enough. And I would listen. I would actually listen to them. But now I've learned that their their opinion doesn't matter to me, that I shouldn't be listening to them. It matters what I want to do. If I want to do this, doesn't matter if I'm good or I'm bad, I'm doing it. So I've learned to just block out everyone that's trying to tell me that I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm trying to block out all that rejection and just move along with my goals. Block it out. I love it. Loud and clear there, Connor. That's excellent. Really, really good. Um, Let's talk about being a role model. You're on the Next Generation Role Model Show. Um, This show is all about setting a good example to others and also the fact that you love to help people. And that's one of the reasons you're on this show. Uh, I noticed on your Instagram page, you are a big animal lover. Lots of posts of you with animals talk to me a bit about your work with animals and what you do well obviously like if you look at my instagram you can see that i i love dogs i actually adopted another puppy like not too long ago 
And we just, we I've had dogs my entire life. And I've been working with a, a charity called SMPLA, which is the spade neuter project of Los Angeles, where they help like all these uh, dogs and cats that, that don't have a home, like they try to help foster them. So I've been working with them as well. And just my entire life, I've loved animals. And like one day I would like to work on on set like with a with a dog or an animal like that there you go you got to book one of those commercials for a pet product that's what you <laughs> want to do connor <laughs> for pedigree or something like that with, with a dog and be chasing it around the park or something and get paid for it <laughs> <laughs> i think that would be great <laughs> okay so let's talk about you and your favorite role models i want to know who is your role model and if you um met them what would you do with them so for tennis my role model would be uh rafael nadal he's my favorite tennis player he has both a great a great game and a great mental mental game which i feel like is also important in that and he also support like has his own charity that that he works with and I'd probably, when I, when I meet him, I would say that I am grateful to meet him. I, I want to say that I loved him. He's inspired me with tennis and everything I do. And I, and that's probably what I would say, just to talk about how much he's helped me grown as a person. And, and in acting, I'd say my biggest role model is Harrison Ford, because growing up, I've loved Star Wars. It's been my favorite movie. And he's inspired me with uh, getting that confidence of his characters. It seems like all the characters he plays, he plays with a lot of confidence. And that's given me like inspiration to try to show confidence myself. So if I met him, I would say thank you for everything you've done to help me through my tough times as well. And I'm so thankful to meet you as well. Wow. And that's an amazing thing about being a role model. Harrison Ford never met you, doesn't know who you are, but you, you've, you've role modeled him and he's inspired you so much. And I'm sure that there are kids out there that, that you know, you don't know, but they know you and they've seen you, they've seen you play tennis, they've seen you do your acting and you in turn are inspiring them, which is very important. And that reminds us all of how important it is to set a good example and to be out there, you know, being positive and going after your dreams, which is what you're doing, Connor. So thank you very much for setting a great example and for being on the show and talking about what inspires you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And thank you for, for coming and chatting with us. And um, we're going to continue to follow your career. And um, I'm very excited about all the goals you have and the, everything that you're doing and creating within your uh, career. And um, yeah, I'm sure you and I might meet at an animal charity or something one day. You never know. <laughs> hey, animals are great. Right? If I can support a charity with an animal, I'm very happy. There you go. They're the best. Absolutely. Well, I'll think of you for any events that come up and I'm hoping that we can meet in person one day. I'm hoping so too. Fantastic. Thanks for being on the show, Connor. We'll Thank see you, you so soon. Much. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.